today takes us to a French chateau high up in the Alps and uh, to one of my favourite pieces of work, an exhibition I held last year. Uh, and uh, it uh, was held in London and uh, it was called uh, When You Read This. And um, it's a, a rather strange tale. Uh, things aren't all what they seem to be. And when she asks you, you tell her that I told you that I'm tired of castles in the air. I've got a dream, I want the world to share in castles in the air. Just leave me to despair. And if she asks you why, you can tell her that I told you that I'm tired of castles in the air. I've got a dream, I want the world to share in castles. Just leave me to despair. To move the camera, but here it is. The Chateau de Pimentel, and um, it was refurbished uh, th two or three years ago. But during the refurbishment, uh, the floors were taken up, and uh, one of the workmen said uh, before they chucked the old ones on the on the uh, on, on the fire, he said there's writing on the underside, and they found all this stuff. Here's bits of it, writing that dated back here to 1880. Martin Joachim, he was a carpenter, and what he did, he spilled the beans on uh, all the villages and the terrible things they were up to. And it was like a sort of a confessional for him. And uh, I like the idea that, in fact, the people he's writing about uh, at that time were walking on his floors. They didn't realise that all their secrets were literally underfoot. So what I did, I went to the chateau and I photographed uh, the the wood that had been preserved. It was in a cellar, um, and uh, and then I decided to translate it into English, and uh, I made it like this. There it is in the gallery, when you read this, the underside of a floor. And these are some of the things he wrote about. Here, he says here, a final word on Mayor Philippe. Just like his father, he is no respecter of religion, no mass, no prayer, but he needs to pray. He has four children, three girls and one boy. The eldest girl has a goitre, the second girl is lame, the third girl is a deaf mute, and so is the boy. May God protect them all, if not him. Some of it is pretty salacious. I mean, he's got here, Fridu Piero is Mr Roman's assistant. Yesterday evening he came for cake and lemonade at my house with his wife, who is four months pregnant. Their daughter was born a hermaphrodite. His brother-in-law is a great big idiot. When you take a wife, make sure you choose an educated rather than a rich one for her dowry. Frido is having to leave the chateau as his wife is thick and ignorant. She may have had a dowry of 7,000 francs, but she's extremely stupid. And then there's um, troubling things like here, uh, he says uh, in 1868... As I was passing by a stable door at midnight, I heard a groaning. It was one of my best friend's mistresses giving birth. They had been fucking for 10 or 11 years. She has already given birth to six bastard uh, babies. Four are buried in the stable. 
one boy survived and also a girl uh, who is now the same age as my daughter. Let me tell you, he was shamed for it in public. And so it goes on. Here he says here about the deputy mayor of Savine, the train driver, has made a very bad floor out of Larch. His plane doesn't work as well as mine. Mine is from Marseille. 150 francs a metre in the bedroom. Reader, if you need to work, make sure you get paid. Don't do as I did and work for 60 cents a metre, especially when I didn't do anything wrong. You need one franc a metre. He's very conscious of that sort of thing. Here's another one. The Ange father, who is a farm, who, who, who is a farmer, had four children, two boys and two girls. The elder son worked with them. He took his wife uh, in Pontis, a small woman who is quite pretty. Two years ago, she commissioned Frido to build a greenhouse. I made a note of the day, and after nine months, the result was a beautiful boy with brown hair. And this one. Every Saturday, his skinny sister goes to the seminary to confess, where I've heard there is an abbot teacher who fell madly in love with her, because she has this way of getting, gently giving in to his sex talk. Although plain, she is sexy. Um, and he says, lots of that abbot teacher's other women, confessors, have also been taken in by his filthy chat. He ends uh, by uh, talking about... Uh, himself and he says uh, I shall no longer be of this world when you read this but there are people here much less happy than me so who am I to complain I will leave this world willingly so keep fit and well my friend and remember that one day you too will be as I will be in the monastery graveyard and this one here is relates to a murder here a few months after a certain criminal's wedding his cruelly abandoned mistress left for Marseille, leaving her father to look after their child. But she didn't say where she could be found. His father, who has a disabled wife, is a gravedigger by trade, so he was able to make bodies disappear. <laughs>